I'm back. I know it's been a while. Appreciate you guys' patience. I I have a good excuse for not posting nothing for a while. Customers are kind of calling saying, hey, what's going on with my stuff? I appreciate you guys' patience also. The reason I've been kind of mumble jumbled or behind is trying to figure out this guy. Good news is I got her figured out for the most part. This is a Haas TL1 lathe. Um, I've been looking at getting into CNC equipment for the main reason of being able to contour my own barrels. Lead times on barrels is a nightmare. And then top that is trying to stock any profiles or any contours is next to impossible. Just the short time I've been doing this, one person wants it 700 thousandths at 22 inches and the next one wants it 700 thousandths at 18 inches and some of them want a, a tapered profile, some of them want a pommel -like profile, it's just a nightmare. So with getting the CNC machine, I can do that by myself per the customer request. Cuts off with the lead time of getting them profiled. Also that helps. Um, you can generally find blanks in stock from different companies, right? Um, Wilson, I'm actually going to be doing a, a big buy on Wilson. I'm going to buy 200 barrels and kind of stock them myself to help other gunsmiths out that need barrels profiled in a timely manner. As another side income of my business along with doing prefit barrels for Savage and Tico's and doing rebarrel projects. So that's the main reason why I got CNC is to, the, to do the barrel contouring. Well, the more I played with it, I was going to keep my Acro machine, do my threading on there, but this makes it so nice. It was at least a two-month endeavor figuring out how to program the lathe because I have no CNC experience. When I bought this machine, I didn't know how to spell CNC. So it took me at least two months to get comfortable with it, enough to understand how to write a code, draw up something on CAD, and when I pushed cycle start, it actually turned out to what I wanted it to do. So that's the main reason I, why I got CNC to begin with. So the story behind this lathe, I had to go to Illinois and pick it up. I'll post a picture here. I talked to the guy online and we had it on Marketplace and eBay and a couple other places. And it looked extremely clean. It's dirty now. But if I washed all the dirt off from the oil, it'd be immaculately clean. Um, I didn't see no damage. The only damage I found on it, somebody dropped a chuck right there. Um, do you ever change a chuck? Hey, put a piece of wood underneath of it. But everything else seemed good. Holds tolerance is great. Everything works great. Um, basically got a half a new. Like I said, I was like 10 days away from just calling the uh, progressive and saying, hey, send me a new machine. I'm tired of looking for used ones. This one popped up. Got a heck of a deal about half a new. Come with all the stuff I wanted on it, along with the three and a half inch spindle bore. That was huge for me, and that was the biggest hang up from looking at any other lathes and from any other companies. Uh, most of them just have a two, maybe a two and an eighth inch spindle bore. I like to be able to take a 700 action, a Ruger, whatever, uh, all, Savage, putting it in my aluminum blocks. Dialing in the board and push and play and not have to worry about take off a barrel, scratching something in the barrel removal process, goofing up somebody's headspace, all that. So that's why I went with the Haas. There's a million other lays out there. Um, if Herco still made their engine lathe or the, their uh, teach lathe or whatever you want to call these tool room lays, I would have looked really hard about them, but they quit making them. So. I went with the Haas. So learning this thing, if you go online, everybody says, oh, it's easy. You'll be able to pick it up in no time. It took me about two months to even get comfortable with it. I ain't going to lie. And there was a lot of frustration. I mean a lot. Um, Training-wise, I got G-Code Tutor um, online. 
did a great job kind of giving me the basics of G-code. I'm very dyslexic as a person, extremely. Like how I am a, a airplane pilot with an instrument rating and an instrument instructor and a machinist dealing with numbers is beyond me. But I goof up numbers like crazy. So I rely on a CAD system to program the machine unless it's stupid easy stuff. So all my throat profiles that I built are all done via CAD program. Fusion is what I use. Um, there's another company that I won't get into that I bought into and it was extremely high priced and it's been nothing but a nightmare to deal with. So if you're not good with writing code or numbers, you're going to have to figure out a computer system. I use Fusion. So that's one thing I'll say in this whole endeavor. It is not easy to learn. If you think you're just going to buy it a week from now, be able to make money with it. Unless you have a lot of formal training, get that shit out of your head right now. It, it is not the case. But the benefits of it are amazing. I'll show you some of the stuff that I love about it as a gunsmith, just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. And uh, we'll go from there. So this thing right here, this lathe, the way it's set up is I bypass the safety systems, okay? I'm not going to lie. How I do stuff in gunsmithing and what we do, this lathe, it's just, it just should not be set up with guards or doors. So I took this back door off completely. This one still works. I can slide it over to keep chips from flying and coolant from flying from whatever. But I bypassed the safety switch on the doors. I don't recommend anybody doing it. It's just what I did, just so I could work on it. It's just a nightmare. Being able to push cycle starts, you'd have to have the doors closed. So for starters, this feature right here is absolutely amazing for me. So it's the handle jog feature. And this moves it back and forth. So if you indicate off the carriage like I do, going in and out, it's nice and smooth. There's like almost no play, no backlash, no nothing in this system. So smooth. So it'll move a tenth at a time, a thousandth at a time, or a tenth of a thousandth at a time. Doesn't seem like a big deal now, but when you're chambering a barrel, it is so nice and handy, okay? Um, got the true bore alignment system on there. Nate up there, straight shot gun smithing, sent me down an adapter, adapts up perfectly. Absolutely love this system on this machine. I took my tool post off my Haas, or my Acro machine and put it on here. Um, I like a big, meaty, heavy tool post. If I were to reinvest and start over, I would go with the CXA instead of CA. It just gives a little bit more room on the, on the machine to work around. So that's the controls, the tool post. Love this system. He, he knocked it out of the park with this, the true bore alignment system. One thing I didn't realize I'd like so much is cleaning out the chip tray is so easy. You just scrape everything out. I use a squeegee. Gets rid of all the chips nice and easy. Um, the light is nice. I actually incorporated my own light here. I'm getting old to better see stuff. But yeah, this this is really nice. Um, if you want to push a button, you can. You can go fast and slow with the push of a button. Raise this up here. This will move it in and out. You can adjust your revolutions per minute with by using this. Super handy when you're just making little cuts. On say I wanted to turn this off, I just Set my turns for revolution, push a button, and it'll just take that off right there. <clears throat> my favorite feature on this, Hoot Inker, is 
the operator position. So this is basically a digital readout. Okay. Your DRO for your other machine is is the same as this, but it's got one for your program or distance to go, all this stuff, right? What I like is I could go here and go um, Z origin and it'll really knock it out. So when you get your chamber into your reamer into the chamber, right? It's hard to keep track of everything as a machinist. You got play in your carriage, you got play in everything, and it's it's easy to go too deep. Well, if you zero this out on your Z, we can uh, go back over to here so you can see me moving this hand and watch this. We can go a tenth at a time on the Z. That's a tenth of a thousandth. Where most machines, you're doing it by feel. So it took me 10 clicks to get a thousandth. If we want to go a thousandth at a time, just turn the dial up. A thousandth at a time. So... I laughed how easy it was to hit headspace the first time. Put a put my barrel tendon in, screw it up to my my go gauge, measure with the feeler gauge, and I got close. Took off the distance plus two thousandths, one for crush and one for space, and nailed it. I mean, it's this right here is hands down my favorite my favorite thing about this machine for chambering uh, for hitting headspace. One thing that it kind of sucks is, is, I mean, if you want to turn it on, spindle, you just and forward, you can you can start it right. It starts that quick. But when you're used to a manual machine, just flipping a lever and flipping it down, having a foot brake to stop everything, it's not nearly as convenient. But I feel Haas did an awesome job of kind of pairing the two machines together. So yeah, this is what's been taking up all my time. Long story short, I'm comfortable with it. I fairly got a fairly good understanding on how to use most of it. I'm not your CNC program writer guy, but we're going to start doing more and more projects on it. So yeah, one thing we need, couldn't figure out a name for it. So if you guys can come up with a name and leave them in the comments, I greatly appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. And as always, God bless.